Okay, so I have here an old uh, pickup that came out of, this is the neck pickup that came out of a customer's Gibson SG. I actually have both the neck and the bridge pickup. And uh, I'm going to have to, th this guy, by the way, took these pickups out somewhere in the 90s, took his guitar and had, uh, had a guitar shop put in, um, put in EMGs for him. And as you can see, they cut the leads completely off of this. And so I get to horse around with these pickups because I'm going to have to redo these leads anyway. I'm going to have to take it apart and solder. Uh, a new lead on because he wants these pickups put back in the SG because well hey the 90s are over so what I'm gonna do is use this to show you a couple things and what I want to um, basically to demonstrate is how you get into a humbucker and then how you can replace the magnets in them this is something I've seen on a lot of forums where people have uh, talked about that in other words the difference between a 1957 uh, PAF and a 1959 PAF are basically that the 57 has an Alnico 2 magnet and the 59 has an Alnico 5 and so a lot of people will actually want to just take the pickups they have and slide out the Alnico 5 and slide in an Alnico 2 if they want it to be a little bit sweeter sounding um, or maybe it's got an Alnico 2 in it and they want to slide in an Alnico 5 so that it can have a little bit more bite to it um, or people like to play around with other things like Alnico 3s and 4s and 8s, right? So just in case you're one of those people, let's talk about how to get into this. These covers are, of course, uh, soldered on. And you're going to have a hard time if you decide to unsolder these. You could so unsolder it with, um, if you've got a good desoldering station, that sucked it out, you could do that. You could heat it up and suck it out with a wick. But you're going to end up having, you know, these. all of this is serving as a big heat sink, and you're going to have a hard time uh, getting enough heat on it to suck the solder off, especially without melting, for instance, the wax inside, if it's a wax-potted pickup, and maybe even melting the bobbins, especially if they're the older-style butrate bobbins that are very temperature-sensitive. So a lot of people will use something like this, like a uh, putty knife, and go in and whack the seam open. Some people will actually sharpen up the edge of their, of their putty knife specifically to do that. I actually like using uh, just plain old wood chisels. And I use this, this very, very tiny uh, petite hammer to do it. And uh, I don't know if I'll be able to show you this, but I'll try to. What I'm going to do here is just put this right in there and give it just enough of a whack to be able to break through the solder and nothing else with this little itty bitty hammer. And actually I think that did it. <laughs> it's not that hard. And now we'll go over to the other side. Yep. And that's all it took. We just cut right through those, cut right through those solder joints. Okay, and this is in fact a wax potted pickup. If you take a look, you can see the wax oozing out. They did not attempt to uh, to make it look pretty in any way, shape, or form since it's under a cover. So now um, let's talk about how to change the magnet in this. You'll notice there's wiring at one side, and the other side you can actually just see the magnet there. On the back, these four screws hold the bobbins in, so we're going to take and just loosen up these four screws. We're not going to take them out, we're just going to loosen them up. Let's use this screwdriver. Okay, so we got one that's loose, we got two that's loose, three, and finally, there. Okay, so these four are loosened up now. And what I'm going to do is basically just push this magnet right out this side. I'm going to use this little flathead screwdriver here. Can you see it? Just push that magnet right out there, right? Yeah. Now, a thing to note at this point, this factory magnet does not have the north and south poles noted on it. Um, I will be right back. I'll mention I have this handy dandy little gauss meter 
and I can tell, okay, so it's reading about, if you can read that, which you probably can, hey, there we go, reading in the uh, right under 800 Gauss range as a peak. That means this is definitely an Alnico 5 bar, which is what I, okay, there we got, yeah, 626 on the south side, and this also tells me that this is a south and this is a north. Um, usually when you buy magnets, they will come with the north side marked. If not, you can use a regular old compass to see if it, it'll point towards the north side. Yeah, compass always points north. Um, and this one, you'll notice, has a maximum gauss. Yeah, see if I can... Sorry guys, this is a hard thing for me to film. Maximum Gauss in this like 450-500 range. This is an Alnico 2 bar. Now something to remember here is that the south side of the magnet always faces the screws and the north side always faces the pole pieces. Praise God this is one standard on humbuckers. As some of you know, wiring on humbuckers is not standard when you get into the four wires that this is. So we would take our new magnet with the north side headed towards the slug side of the bobbin and the south side headed towards the screws and just push it right back in there, right? There you go, baby, we've just changed the magnets. And now we will tighten down our four screws. This is for demonstration purposes only. Put the cover back on, get all the screws to where they come through the cover. There we go. And now to solder the cover back on, I will tell you that you need a big solder gun. You need one of these big whatever this is. Um, how many watts is this thing? 8,200. Mm, no. 140 watts. 8,200. But you, if, if you're going to try to do it with just a little soldering iron like this, you're going to have an impossible time. You need some serious power on this. Um, and a little extra solder to flow in there. I'm going to turn on my vent fan because I don't like breathing solder fumes. You shouldn't either, by the way. It's not good for you. And I'll heat up my iron a little bit here. And then, once it's hot, solder just literally jumps right in there. You get the gun nice and hot first, and then heat up the pickup cover, add a little bit more solder to bridge the gap, and there you go, baby. She's all back together again. Um, so there. Ladies and gentlemen, that's what I wanted to show you. That is basically how you will uh, swap the magnets in a pickup. That's how you get in it. That's how you swap the magnets. Of course, I'm going to take this back apart here in a minute and rewire the lead on it and put these back in a guitar, but thought I'd show you. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh -huh.